Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel Shilkef. In this video, I am going to discuss about behavior of plate gutter. I already discussed about the introduction part of the plate gutter regarding whatever the applications and also the components of plate gutter. If you have not yet watched that video, please watch that video and also whatever the video link is in the description. Okay, let's get into this video. As a civil engineer, it is very, very important to understand the behavior of the structure it may be building it may be dam or it may be the bridge if you are pro in understanding the behavior of the structure then the things will become easier for you okay here i am going to discuss about the behavior of plate gutter for example if you are going to design a steel structural member the main focus is on the whatever the local and global stability of the member if you are going to provide the global and local stability then automatically the other things are going to be very easier and they are not much a problem regarding the design of a steel structural member. If you consider hard roll sections, they are proportioned and manufactured in such a way that whatever the stability checks are not required for that because they are already proportioned in such a way that the checks are not at all required for that. But coming to this whatever the built up sections, if you consider this built up section, this is a plate gutter. Here you are going to give whatever the your own thickness and also own dimensions to this plate gutter. So it is very very important to check the stability conditions. It may be global stability or local stability of the structural member. And the main problem with this plate gutters is you are going to provide deep thin webs. So that the chance of failure of the structural member with respect to stability is very high. So it is very very important to check the stability of these build up sections. To tackle such instabilities in the plate gutters, you are going to provide these stiffeners so that you can increase the load carrying capacity of the plate gutter. Here you can see this is the I section or you can say plate gutter of I cross section and these are the stiffeners which are provided at suitable spacing to increase the load carrying capacity or, you, or to enhance the shear strength of the plate gutter. Now these are the general failure modes of the plate gutter that is yielding of tension flange and also buckling of compression flange. For example, if you consider a beam and you are going to apply load on this beam. For example, this is a simply supported beam. Now you all know that whenever this beam is going to bend, these top fibers are in compression and bottom fibers are in tension this whatever the top fibers are in compression and bottom fibers are in tension in case of the simply supported beam so in the similar way in case of plate gutter the top flange is in the compression and bottom flange is in the tension and because of the compression in the top flange it is going to fail in case of buckling and coming to the tension flange because of the tension you are going to apply it is going to be failed in case of yielding but whatever the ultimate tension test you are going to apply you are going to do on a bar of steel bar which are fixed at the ends and you are going to apply the axial force in the member in that case then whatever the bar is going to be failed by reaching its ultimate strength this is nothing but the material failure and this is also very very important please keep this in mind Whatever the structural member which is going to be failed, it may be failed due to whatever the cross section failure or whatever the material failure. If you consider this yielding failure, this yielding is going to be caused due to the material failure. Because of the application of the load, the material reach its yield strength and causing the failure in the structural member. But coming to this whatever the buckling, it is due to the cross section failure. That means Buckling mainly depends on the slenderness ratio, which in turn depends on the whatever the KL by R, L is the length and is, K is the effective length factor and R is the radius of gyration. R in turn depends on the whatever the moment of inertia and whatever the area. So in this way, these are all depends on the whatever the cross section properties. So this is nothing but the cross section failure. But coming to the yielding, it depends on the material properties. This is material failure. 
So in this way, the failures are also two types that is material failure and also cross section failure. These things you have to keep in the mind and it is very, very important to understand how the structural member is going to be failed. Here you can observe this is the plate gutter and it is having the intermediate stiffeners at suitable intervals or spacing you can say that is I am saying as C. And this is the depth of the whatever the stiffener or you can say depth of the web and also T is the thickness of the web. Now whenever the load is going to be applied on this plate gutter, there is going to be generation of the principal stresses in the plate gutter. These principal stresses are going to be generated near the high shear concentration. You all know the high shear concentration is near the supports or it may be under the concentrated loads. So whatever the principal stresses which are going to be generated in the plate gutter are inclined to the neutral axis. And what are these principal stresses? The, those are nothing but diagonal tension and diagonal compression. Now, what is the major concern for this plate gutter? Diagonal tension, there is no problem regarding this diagonal tension. It is going to be resisted by the whatever the web which is provided for the plate gutter. And the major problem for this plate gutter is diagonal compression. Whatever the diagonal compression is going to be generated, it is going to cause the buckling of the web. So initially, this buckling is going to be generated in the whatever the web and perpendicular to the whatever the diagonal compression. For example, if you consider this panel, in this way, diagonal compression is going to be generated in this web which will in turn cause the failure in the perpendicular direction to this diagonal compression. So now, how to avoid this diagonal compression failure in the plate gutter? It is arrested by the reducing the depth to thickness ratio of the web. So you all know this is the whatever the D is the depth of the web and also thickness of the web. I can say T is the thickness of the web. By decreasing the D by T ratio, you are going to arrest this whatever the diagonal compression which is going to be generated in the web and also providing the stiffeners at suitable spacing. It is also going to increase the shear strength and also load carrying capacity of the plate gutter. So how this plate gutter is going to be behavior is, for example, initially whenever the load is going to be act on this plate gutter there is a buckling occurs in this web. After occurrence of this buckling, there is a generation of diagonal compression. And this diagonal compression, whenever you provide stiffeners in the plate gutter, this horizontal component is going to be resisted by the flanges and whatever the vertical component of this diagonal compression is going to be resisted by the stiffeners. So in this way, whenever you provide stiffeners, this diagonal co compression is going to be transferred to these flanges and also stiffener. So whenever the buckling is going to be initiated in the plate gutter, automatically the plate gutter is going to act as a entrance. Here you can see this is the entrance. So in entrance, whatever the load coming onto the structure is going to be transferred as compression in the vertical members and also as tension in the whatever the inclined bracing members. So in the similar fashion, whatever the diagonal compression and also diagonal tensions which is going to be generated in the plate gutter, the same as whatever the entrance is behaving, the same as the plate gutter is going to be behave. So the diagonal tension is entirely taken by the web and coming to the diagonal compression, it is going to be transferred to the stiffener and also whatever the flange and whatever this what action is going to be generated in the web is nothing but tension field action. So initially the buckling of the web is going to take place. That is the initial strength of the plate gutter. And after that, whatever the strength which is going to be generated is nothing but the tension field action. The web resists only diagonal tension and this behavior of web is nothing but the tension field action. And whatever the strength which is going to be generated after the buckling of the web is nothing but the post buckling strength. <laughs> and 
because of the suitably spaced intermediate stiffeners increase the shear strength and also tension field action in the plate girder so this is a behavior of the plate girder which is nothing but similar as a n type truss so you have to compare each and everything with the whatever the structures which are existed in the nature in this way you are going to compare and you are going to learn whatever the new things this is regarding the behavior of plate girder part 1 in the second part i am going to discuss in detail regarding the shear strength of the plate girder okay thank you for watching this video